Hey, I'm Bob Alsop with Laguna Tools. Normally when we do a CNC video, it's usually to, to kick off a new machine model or a new design or something like that, and it always includes a software component because we want to also show you how to do something on the machine. Or something has come out really nice recently and I just couldn't wait till the next new machine introduction, so I want to do a video to show you all about it. You have probably heard of a 3D software product called SketchUp. It was actually created by Google. It's owned by another company now. Uh, it's extremely widely used. Uh, there's a free version of it. In fact, what I'm going to use on the screen today is, is solely the free version. Uh, but it's opened up a whole new world of 3D. It's very easy to, to learn. There's tons of video tutorials on the internet. So it's the easiest 3D modeling that you'll be able to come up with. Okay, Google SketchUp has been widely used in architecture. Um, but we've always had a problem while we could create these objects and create them quickly and, and uh, with a lot of detail, we never had a link that would allow us to turn that into something we can machine on a CNC router, but that's all changed. If you have VCAR Pro or Aspire, uh, there's a new update that just came out. In fact, you don't have to install anything, you just click update under help. And it updates the software, it updates uh, VCAR Pro to 7.5 and Aspire to 4.5, I believe. Now, here's what they added, one of the features they added to that software, the ability to open up a SketchUp file and turn it into parts we can machine. Okay, let's talk about SketchUp a little bit. Uh, there is a website called the 3D Warehouse, and the 3D Warehouse is a place where people upload things they design. And there's virtually any kind of product you can imagine. The major appliances are all there. Um, one of the areas that's in there is an area that has furniture, and I was really interested in how that relates to what we do in woodworking. And so I, I downloaded some stuff. I was also interested in high-end millwork, because one of the problems the millwork industry has is, is when you get into the nurses' stations and the cash wraps, those are, those are pretty time-consuming to design, and I was looking for SketchUp as perhaps a way to do that efficiently. Now, let's look at a, a file here. This is a, a, a object that I downloaded from the Google Warehouse and it's basically called a 3D shaker chest and it, it looks like a 3D, looks like a piece of furniture. This one has dovetail drawers. Uh, let's take an x-ray view of that. Now if you look inside you see all the details. You see where they put the drawer guides, you see all the joinery. You know, the, we can output those parts and cut them now in VCAR Pro. Okay, now here's another example of a blanket chest. You can tell I've searched for blanket chests. What I really want to do sometime is take a blanket chest design like that and, and use uh, ready to assemble fasteners. But once again, here's another design. There's turnings. Let's look on the inside of it. Wow. You see all the interior components. Remember, each of those now, we can get the part out of that if we need it. That's neat. So far, we've kind of talked about furniture and we've talked about, we're going to talk about cabinets in great detail in a minute, but one of the areas I'm really interested in is uh, architectural millwork. Now, here's what that is. Nurses stations, bank interiors, cash reps, those kinds of things that are made with panel products typically, but they're not rectangular boxes and they're not typically made with easily with cabinet software. Cabinet software is great for cabinets, but when you get into the more complex stuff, it takes a lot of intervention in it. Now, one other alternative is to go to a CAD-based program, but at the end of the day, you're drawing all the parts. So it makes, to me, it makes more sense to create the object in SketchUp now that we can machine those parts. So here's an example on the screen, and this is, I basically searched nurses stations because I in a Google warehouse because I was looking around, and that looks kind of neat. That's curved, and I'm gonna bet that's a die wall. You know, it's the kind of thing that you might see in a hospital. Now, let's x-ray this. Let's take the x-ray view, and we'll, let's see how much effort they put into this, aha. This one's a pretty good one. You see the supports in here? That's, these are actually die walls. You can see the holes in the two befores to run the cabling. So this is a really well-designed one. Now sometimes, I'm gonna warn you, sometimes in Google SketchUp, you get the outside shape. They haven't really designed the inside. In this case, this is a, this is a very good design. Okay, now this particular file is a sales counter. And it, once again, it came from 3D Warehouse, and it's pretty interesting. A lot of wood grain. Let's see, uh, let's see what's inside it. Yep, okay, that was designed. You see the parts that are in the inside? Don't see hardware. Yeah, there's hardware on the outside. Yeah, there is some design. I see where they put some passages underneath in order to, to run wires. Now, if you zoom out on this thing, you'll find out there's a whole lot here. 
So there's a lot of different objects. You know, here's a desk that's been designed in that file. So it looks like there's a whole suite of office type products that were that were designed the same way. Let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this one. Yeah, see, there's something nice. Typical cash wrap. So there's a whole lot of things you can do. And, and I want to show you some of this stuff in SketchUp so that you kind of get an idea of what's, what's possible to do with it fairly easily. Okay, let's take a look at something here. You'll hear me a lot of times talk about qualified tenant joinery. Let me explain it to you. You may not have heard of it before. Probably about, I don't know, 15 years ago, we came up with this idea. And, and once again, one of the reasons you buy CNC is because you can make products better. And if you're in a cabinet shop, you, you have to think about uh, the employees that you have or you hire to do the cabinet assembly. CNC lets you uh, simplify that so that parts fit a certain way. Now, this is what, when I talk about qualified tenon, this is the tenon right here, right? And the qualified part means this. Here's the material thickness. I've made a cut here, and that qualifies the thickness of this material here. What that means is this joint always fits. Even if your material varies in thickness, the fit of the joint is there. Okay, this is a blind. This is, it's cut back and it's called blind. Now the reason I did that, typically on frameless cabinetry, uh, this front piece is gonna get edge banded. Well, think about an edge bander. You run the part through the edge bander and when it, on the leading and trailing edges, there's a saw that trims the, the edge banding. And we wanna make sure that that trimmer catches in this surface rather than out here. So that's why we notched that back. And I went ahead and drew, th this is really what it looks like because when we cut it, we cut it with a 3 8 tool. So you really have a 3 16 radius in there. But that's a qualified tenon blind dado. Okay, now uh, I've turned off, on SketchUp you can turn things on and off. And when I, when I created the cabinet, I put different parts on different layers. So I can turn those on and off. So a while ago we looked at the uh, stretchers. I'll turn those back on. See, that's how they fit. So we were actually looking at this stretcher and I had turned those two off so you didn't, they're hitting them. So we'll turn those off. Now you see that stretcher then fits into that joint and let's look at that. So there's the dado. Now you'll notice something else I have in there too and that is I actually have a hole here. You might say, why'd you do that? Why? It goes, it goes back to the whole idea about making things easy to put together. And so, so you've got the qualified tenon that fits into that dado, and so that joint, should, that fit should be good. Then let's go back on the other side. Then if it's an unfinished end, if it's an unfinished end, then I drill a hole. We'll turn that off, you can see. I drill a hole. Now what do you, I do with that hole? I put glue on the joint, I put it together, and on that hole, I put a screw in there, and that becomes my clamp, and that clamps the piece in. Now if you notice, if you look at some of these others, You'll notice, for instance, back here where I would have a nailer like this, you see there's, there's two holes there. All right, well, there's a reason for that. That part, that nailer does not get a join in it. And, and the reason it doesn't get a join in it is it makes assembly uh, much easier. You know, you can get these assemblies so complicated, it takes more than one person to put it together. So you kind of have to think when you're designing this, you know, how is this going to work in the shop? Now, what we do on this cabinet, and let's zoom out on it a little bit, and we'll turn the rest of the parts on. Give you an idea. So there's your cabinet. And we'll unhide. And we'll, okay, so there's your cabinet. All right, let's, let's think about this, okay? Here are your parts. Here are your end panels, left and right ends. There's your, there are your stretchers. And, and really, these are interchangeable parts. They don't have to be, but typically uh, it's simpler if you make it that way. Okay, so those fit into the cabinet sides with the qualified tenon blind data, all right? So you know that. Now the bottom is a little bit different, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. When we go down here to the bottom, uh, we'll look at that. Now the bottom is actually just in a dado. It's not a qualified tenon dado, it's a blind dado. You can kind of see that, it's a blind dado, so it doesn't show on either side. But it's not a qualified tenon, and I'll tell you why. If you look at the back side of this, let's turn the ends off where we can look at it. If you look at the back side of it, you see where the back panel slides into here. If I do a qualified tenon, then I have to have machining on both sides. So by, by leaving that a full width dado, that allows me to drop this in. And it's really important when you get ready to actually assemble the cabinet. Like I said, you can get this so hard you can't get them together. So what we try to do when, we do, when we're doing assembly, We'll put the stretchers and the bottom together and screw them together, okay? 
Then the back slides in, and when you slide the back into that groove, which is three-eighths on each side here and into this, that automatically squares the, ca the cabinet. So you slide that in, and it squares your cabinet. Then you put your, your nailer on here. you got two holes in it. And then we come over here to the front, and the same thing, we put our toe kick the same way. So that's a real easy way to assemble cabinets. So this, this construction method has evolved in time, believe me. But uh, So that's really where we're going to start. Okay, now let's look at the mechanics. Let's look at what's new. What I've shown you so far is, is SketchUp. We've always been able to do that. Being able to machine these parts is what's new. So what I've done here is I've opened up VCAR Pro. This is, once again, this has the new updates, so it has this importer. Let's just create a file, and I'm, I'll walk you through this. You start out and you create a new file. And when you come up to this screen, this represents the, the material size. And the plywood I have, I believe, is 96 by 48. It's veneer plywood. Okay, once again, here's the material thickness, and then we're, we're going to run this on a Smart Shop 2 that has automatic tool touch off. So when you do that, the top of the spool board is technically Z0 rather than the top of the part. If you're a metalworking machinist, you're probably more used to touching off at the top of the material, but typically in panel processing, we don't do that. Okay, so this is our setup. Here's our material. Now, let's go up here to this folder under File Operations. There's a folder that says import vectors from a file. This is what's new. I click on that and all of a sudden SketchUp is now included as one of the type files it opens. So here's this cabinet that we just looked at. Now you, it comes up to this screen and um, basically this is where you set the nesting parameters. All right, it says gap between parts. Well, I've got it set at a half inch and that's okay because I'm going to use a 3 8 tool. And now, one of the things that you'll find out about SketchUp that's always been a problem is that is arcs aren't real arcs. So if you draw a circle in SketchUp, it might be 24 or more straight lines, polylines. And you, so what you get up are a whole bunch of little straight line segments. Well, that doesn't machine as well. So what VCAR Pro has done and also in Aspire is now they take those curves and they convert them to true arcs as they bring it in. And that's what some of these questions down here are. Create arcs, circles. Um, over here, here's, here's, the, here's the different parts. You can see there's two end panels, there's two stretchers, there's a toe, there's a bottom, a nailer, a shelf, and a back. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to bring the back in because I made, I made it out of quarter inch material. So I, I pretty much sort this stuff out by what I want to run. And I hit OK, and there it is. There's all the parts. Now, when it brings them in, they're actually they're blocked together. They're grouped together. So you see here's the cabinet part. So if I ungroup it, now it's into the individual entities and you see the colors change. So here's my holes for machining. There's the holes for the adjustable shelf. There's assembly holes. There's the dados, everything. So that brought that camera in. This is, this is, this is no different than if I drawn those parts and nested them. Okay, now when you bring these parts in, they're, they're good parts and they're good geometry, but sometimes it takes a little bit of manipulation. For instance, on, on these qualified tenon ones, you know, there's the shapes, but I really have to, I, one tool path goes all the way around there, but the qualified, I, I really need a, a rectangle here to cut that tenon, so I'm, I'm really cutting inside, so I have to modify that a little bit, but, but by and large, it comes out really nice. Geometry's real clean. Now let's tool path it, and we'll go out to the machine and run this and see if the parts fit. Okay, we've got, uh, I think our geometry's ready. I, I, there's a couple little modifications. Like I said, I had to add some geometry to make those tenon cuts, but it was pretty easy, really. Um, before we go to the machine to run it, let's, uh, let's run a simulation and see what it looks like. Okay, so we'll, we'll just say preview all tool paths. There's the drilling, there's the joinery, there's the parts. We double click that. There's, looks pretty good to me. All right, here's the real test of this whole process. So let's go out to the machine and cut the parts out and see what we really get. This is the Laguna Smart Shop 2 with the HSD spindle. I have almost have everything set up. I need to touch off one more tool, so I'm going to use the automatic tool touch off. I just press the touch screen button, execute touch off, and the machine takes over. Let's take just a second and talk about the machine in case you're new to the Laguna CNC machines. This model is a Smart Shop 2, has the BNR controller. This particular model has the HSD tool changing spindle. Probably the most important part of this whole machine tool design is the base frame. 
We engineered that base frame so it's a one-piece, all-welded structural steel unit. It's extremely rigid, and that's a secret to edge finish and accuracy. All the machine motion is controlled by precision ground contour guide rails. It's, it's the best technology there is in the industry. We're in the Laguna Demo facility right now, and I actually have the, the new Becker pump installed on the machine. Uh, we've started offering that for applications where you really need a lot of high-level vacuum, where you're using pods or special hardwood fixturing. It makes a lot of sense. The actual machine movement is generated in the x-axis and y-axis by precision ground helical racks. They're in constant mesh, so it produces a really, really smooth motion. All right, if you look at the z-axis, that's controlled by precision ground ball screw. The Smart Shop 2s have our Laguna Universal Vacuum Table. You can't see it on here, but they also have some T-slots down in the table just in case you want to do special fixturing. Also, if you'll notice, there's six valves on the front. There's six actual vacuum zones on the table. So you can do a lot of special setups with this machine. Okay, we just added a new feature to the BNR controller that's on the Smart Shop to allow you to preview a program. Some customers asked for that. Let's see how that works. I've already loaded the program into the machine control. Now, you can do that one of two ways. You can use a USB key if you want, or uh, this actually has a Cat5 cable, and you can supply an optional wireless router and plug in and send it back and forth with FileZilla. In this case, it's already loaded, but watch this. I'm going to hit Preview Program, and it's actually going to show me on the screen what the Nest looks like. That looks exactly like what we saw in VCAR Pro. And what the, the brains of the whole machine is actually the BNR controller. We developed this control uh, in a partnership with BNR, and we were really trying to create a different experience for the machine operator. For instance, if you're familiar with, with uh, traditional machine controls, there's a lot going on on the screen and there's a lot of buttons to learn. We tried to take all those processes and make it simple for a first time user to, to run a machine. Okay, now it's time to see if this link between SketchUp and VCAR Pro really works. We're going to cut a cabinet and we're going to put it together. First, I'm going to turn on the dust collector. I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump. And I'm going to hit cycle start. Uh, this is a, probably the most fun part. It's actually putting the pieces together to see if they fit. And there's always tweaks that you do after you do that, but it came out pretty good. Um, let's see if we can get this together. Yeah, it's pretty good. This is a nice joint fit for furniture for cabinets. You probably want it a little bit looser because by the time you start putting all the parts together, you need a little more play.
it's looking pretty good. All right. Oh yeah, came out pretty good, wow. Even the clearance on my shelf's perfect. When we first started this video, I told you that I thought this was gonna be a big, a big deal. And that is because SketchUp is so easy to use. I, I used the free version, I didn't even buy the pro version. The parts fit, and my hat's off to Vectric for making this happen. Now, if you're, a, if you're just learning woodworking with CNC, this is a great way to get started so that you can design things in 3D and then process them on your machine. If you're an advanced architectural millwork house, I would certainly look at designing things like nurses stations, you know, the non-case goods thing, using SketchUp. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. We certainly enjoyed producing it for you. Uh, I'm amazed at how well this SketchUp uh, Vectric Link works. Uh, the proof is in the cabinet and everything fits. There's a couple improvements I've made, but our first cabinet out of this came out pretty darn good. If you need more information, call Laguna Tools at 1-800-234-1976 or you can go to the website lagunatools.com. Thanks for watching.